So let's construct a simple cross-section model that includes a dummy variable. And for this reason, I constructed a fictitious data set on ocean freight journeys um, leaving London. And let's say you collect the data from some freight line or freight lines or whatever, and you've got information on a route's profitability and its capacity utilization. And the data is on my desktop. And as you can see right over there, um, I've already read in the data in this data set called freight data. And again, I won't attach the data set, so we get used to declare a variables data set. While this makes the code somewhat difficult to read, well, it adds a lot of flexibility for us, and by now you should be sufficiently familiar with R in order to read the code that I'll write down. So let's have a look at my data that is in this data set called Fright Data. So let's have a look at that data set. It's not that big. So as you can see right over there, um, we have about 25 different destinations and two numerical measures for profitability and capacity utilization respectively. Now, both variables are standardized and we also have a dummy variable, so piracy right over there, that um, indicates whether there is piracy on the respective route. And as you can see, I have two variables for that. So this is, um, because you can represent dummy variables in two different ways. You could either adopt the classical way and use the zeros and one to code your data. So this is what I've done over here. And the uh, zeros imply no piracy, while the ones imply piracy on a given route. So for example, um, if you take a look at Hamburg, there is no piracy. But if you take a look at the route to Havana, there is actually piracy. So one indicates piracy on the route, while zero indicates no piracy on the route. Okay? Uh, or you could use factors. And this is what I've done over here. So piracy bin is the same variable, but this time I'm using factors. And which way you choose uh, depends on your data. So as you can see over here, um, no piracy on the road to Hamburg, no piracy on the road to Newcastle, but piracy on the road to St. Petersburg. So it really depends on your data, which uh, representation you use. And if you have some binary yes and no variable like, like I have, well, I would stick to the classical representation. However, if you have multiple factors, such as ethnicity, so for example, if you have black, Asian or whatever, I'd go for the factor representation. Why? Well, remember that for all but one base category, you'll uh, need one variable. So for, for every category but one, you need one dummy variable. And the neat thing in R is that if you use the factor representation and in insert this variable in your equation, R will automatically create all the necessary dummy variables. However, for this, you have to make sure that your variable actually is a factor variable. And you can simply do that by using the factor function. So let's do that. So let's uh, declare this piracy bin variable as a variable uh, with factors. Okay, so let's do that. So what we do is we want to overwrite the variable in our fright data set. So fright data dollar sign. We're going to use piracy bin right over here. So what we want to change is the variable piracy bin in our fright data set. Okay, so we use the assignment operator, then we use the factor function. So factor, open the parentheses, and then we simply put in the um, um, the variable again. So fright data, dollar sign, piracy bin. There you go. Hit enter. And uh, what we've done is we use the fact function on that same variable and we then override the variable in our data set. So great, this is now a factor. Um, next, I would, ch uh, I would urge you to declare the base category so that R knows which factor to leave out when creating the different dummy variables. And you can do that by using the relevel function. So basically what you do is you again want to override this variable. So using the fright data set again, and we're using piracy bin. We then use the relevel function, relevel on that same variable. So fright data, dollar sign, piracy bin. But now comes the important part. We use ref equals quotation marks, and then we put in no, because this is our base category. So no piracy is our base category. So what we do, again, is override the variable in our data set. 
and we then use the relevel function on that same data set or variable and we declare the reference category by putting it in these quotation marks uh, after the the ref so this is actually so no over here this is our base category and we did that by using or we, we told r that by using the relevel function okay so no is now the uh, a base category great we are ready to go so uh, let's check whether piracy has some effect on a route's uh, root profitability and let's use a simple linear model so let's use uh, fright fit let's call that a model like that so we use the assignment operator lm for linear model oops lm for linear model and then so Profitability is our um, dependent variable, and our independent variables are the utilization rate, of course, and whether there is piracy or not. So piracy. And we're going to use the data set fright data. Okay, so this is our model. So as you can see, I'm now using the O and 1 piracy variables. So I'm using this variable over here in my equation. So I'm using this this variable that is representing piracy with a one or the presence of piracy with a one so let's hit enter and um, there was no need to factorize this variable by using the factor function so there was no need to factorize this piracy, this variable piracy um, because we did this implicitly by coding the presence of piracy with ones and the absence of piracy with zeros so let's check our model, okay? So let's put in summary, summary, open the parentheses, fright fit, and let's hit enter. So let's have a look. So this looks like a very good fit. It says that if you increase the utilization rate by one, then the profitability or the rate of profitability will increase by 0.9, well, five if you round it to, you know, two decimal. Um, points while controlling for piracy and that estimate is actually statistically significant so let's have a look at our piracy variable and this is actually also statistically significant and this estimate tells us this estimate right over there tells us that um, on average the presence of piracy reduces the profitability by about 10 points Okay, great, so this makes a lot of sense. So let's do the same thing again, but this time let's use our factorized piracy variable. So let's declare another, mo uh, another model. So right fit two, let's do the same thing. So LM profitability, let's use the utilization rate, but this time let's use the piracy bin variable so you remember this was the factorized variable and it, of course let's use the data set fright data okay great so let's check our coefficients let's put in summary so fright data uh, no, not, not fright data fright fit of course let's hit enter and let's have a look so as you can see these are the exact same estimates. So utilization again, if you increased uh, utilization by one point, um, the uh, profitability will increase by 0.95 points. And if you have piracy on a given route, then the profitability will decrease on average by about 10.11 points.